Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Tuesday, June 7, 2022. The Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF, now has a newly refurbished polygraph unit to vet new recruits as well as those seeking readmission, promotion and assignment to specialized units within the force. The unit was refurbished at a cost of $92 million and unveiled on Friday. The project was undertaken through partnership and funding from the International Narcotics and Law Enforcement Section of the United States Embassy in Kingston. JCF officers were also trained in the specialized area. National Security Minister Dr. Harris Chang says the polygraph unit plays a key role in strengthening and maintaining the integrity of the JCF. He adds that the unit's vetting process supports the work of the Ethics Committee, which investigates unethical and corrupt behavior. But it's a very useful piece of equipment and those who are trained to use it and ask the right questions have uh, proved very effective in screening or reports and it has a role, broad role to play, not investigated by all the police. 24 additional police stations will be outfitted with electronic devices for the recording of reports, complaints and administrative entries. This will be done in the coming weeks as government builds out the station records management system within the Jamaica Constabulary Force to replace the manual station diaries. Every station have 19 of these things. 19. This is the big one they call the station diary. There's one for the prisoners, whatever they come, the lockups, the food they eat, everything. There's one for asset, and there's 15 others so every policeman know. They learn to write in these things and, you know, that's, what, that's how you keep police records, vital legal document, been going for years. The system was implemented at the Harborview Police Station in May under phase one of the program. Meanwhile, the National Security Minister says 400 body-worn cameras have been deployed across 16 locations island-wide. This financial year, an additional 1,000 cameras will be deployed across 120 police stations. In other news, summer 2022 is shaping up to be the strongest summer that Jamaica's tourism has ever seen, exceeding 2019 pre-pandemic figures. That's the word from Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett. All the bookings and the indications are that we are going to exceed 2019 levels in this summer. And we are conscious of the importance of this as the economy, not just of the world, definitely of Jamaica, uh, faces its challenges. And tourism has that special capacity to drive economic activities in so many key areas. Minister Bartlett asserts that a strong summer for tourism will also be a boon for sectors such as agriculture, manufacturing, transportation and the small and medium enterprises that feed the tourism experience. The minister made his remarks on the weekend as he welcomed American Airlines' inaugural once-weekly direct flight from Austin, Texas in the United States to the Sangster International Airport in Montego Bay. An unemployment insurance scheme is to be submitted to Cabinet for approval shortly. Labor and Social Security Minister Carl Samuda made the disclosure during his ministry's recent Labor Relations Awards Banquet. The idea for the scheme was recently announced by Prime Minister Andrew Holness during his Labor Day message. Minister Samuda says it is a priority for the government as the administration works to strengthen the national legislative framework for labor market resilience. We have taken definitive steps to make it a reality in the near future. The International Labour Organization has supported the feasibility phase and we have a preliminary design of the scheme. It is my, it is my expectation that we will shortly be able to make a submission to Cabinet for its approval. Unemployment insurance aims to protect employed persons against the risk of job loss and facilitates access to partial income during spells of unemployment. The feasibility study on unemployment insurance was undertaken by the ILO and the Planning Institute of Jamaica, PIOJ, with input from several government ministries and stakeholders. The first two phases of the feasibility study have been completed as a precursor to implementation, with the third and final phase now underway. The Labor Relations Awards Banquet was held to recognize the contribution of 25 individuals and five organizations for long and dedicated service in the field of labor relations. 
It also featured the presentation of a maquette of one of Jamaica's pioneer female labor rights activists, Agnes Aggie Bernard, by the Minister of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport, Olivia Grange. The first cohort of 500 students is expected to begin training in software design and programming starting this October at the Amber Hart Institute of Coding. A Memorandum of Understanding MOU has been signed between the Amber Group and the Hart NSDA Trust to formalize the establishment of the Institute. This follows the successful pilot involving 100 young people under the Amber Hart Academy. Prime Minister Andrew Holness, who witnessed the signing, hailed the initiative as revolutionary, adding that it aligned with the digital transformation thrust being pursued by the government. He says the partnership between the Amber Group and the Hart NSDA Trust represents innovative thinking in training and development and aligns education to industry needs. This is but one of the projects that we are working on to truly create the digital society. It's a very important part of the digital society thrust because there is the need for the link between machine and function that cyber artificial intelligence. The first batch of trainees under the pilot phase of the initiative recently graduated the intensive six-month program, which was taught by a team of highly qualified master coders from the Amber Group. That was followed by a six-month internship program where they developed software programs alongside senior developers. The successful graduates are now NCT VET certified and have been employed by the Amber Group, Digicel and National Commercial Bank. And finally, Prime Minister Andrew Holness is urging Jamaicans to be prepared for the hurricane season. The 2022 Atlantic hurricane season started on June 1 and already the first named storm, Alex, has caused flooding in Florida. Mr. Holness is calling on Jamaicans to start putting together their preparedness plan in the event of a hurricane. Part of that plan, he says, must be to secure important documents such as land titles, passports and birth certificates. You have to put aside some water, drinking water. I know things expensive, price gone up and all the issues, but still put aside a couple gallons, liters of water in case. Put aside some food that don't require refrigeration and are non-perishable. Put those aside. Look around your community to see if there are any trees or anything else that could become a danger to your housing. The Prime Minister was speaking on Friday as he handed over a two-bedroom house to Seaview Gardens resident Collington Graham. The $5.8 million dwelling was built in four weeks and is one of the homes being provided by the new social housing program. Mr. Graham was living in a derelict building that was damaged by fire in October 2020. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching.